here's the deal. So you got Cruz uh, uh, throwing his hat in the ring for president. You got Rubio out there basically saying he's going to do it. You got Jindal, Bobby Jindal of Louisiana, people saying that he's going to do it. That's great. I, these guys are good guys, you know. I don't care for Rubio at all. But anyway, you know, they all speak a lot of conservative ease. Uh, Rubio is a Trojan horse, and I've demonstrated that many times. But here's the deal. Cruz was born in Canada. His mother was a U.S. citizen, but his dad was a citizen of Cuba at the time he was born. He's not natural born, according to Senate Resolution 511, passed in 2008 by the U.S. Senate, signed by Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. Marco Rubio was born in Miami, but both of his parents were not citizens at the time of his birth. They were born in Cuba. Now, they later became citizens, but... According to Senate Resolution 511 in 2008, signed by Obama and Hillary Clinton, Marco Rubio is not a natural-born citizen. Bobby Jindal, born in Baton Rouge, but both of his parents were citizens of India at the time he was born in the United States. So he is not natural-born. All three of these guys, no, Rubio and Jindal, they are native-born, okay? They are native-born, but they're not natural-born. Cruz would be considered a citizen, especially under number 8, U.S. Code 1401. He is a citizen of the United States. He is a legal citizen. But he's not natural born, according to Senate Resolution 511, passed in 2008, signed by Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. Now, what do we know? I'm gonna, let me just run down this list of what we know about Obama. There's so much people say we don't know. Then I'm going to bring on our first caller. If you want to be a part of the show, 850-623-1330. Here's what we know. His grandmother, now I've got all of this documented, all of this documented. His paternal grandmother said he was born in Kenya, and she was present at the birth. His half-sister, paternal half-sister, said he was born in Kenya. And she was present at the birth. The Kenyan ambassador, Ogega, O-G-E-G-A, Ogega, said he was born in Kenya. And we know the village he was born in and we're erecting a monument. He said that on American radio. And all of that's out on the Internet. And World Net Daily has it all in its archives. And I'll give you all that later. So those are three things we know. His grandmother, his half-sister, and the Kenyan ambassador, they all said he was born in Kenya. His publishers, his publishers, and they are, oh, I'm trying to look for their name, Acton and Dystel, publishers. In starting in 1991 all the way up through 2007, 2008, when he was actually running for president, for 12 years his publishers said he was born in Kenya. His publishers said. I will also tell you no hospital in the United States officially claims to be the birthplace of Barack Obama. None. Kapiolani, Obama said was his birthplace, and wrote them a letter of congratulations on their 100th anniversary. They displayed that letter for a little while and then took it down and won't display it anymore. How odd is that? Governor Neil Abercrombie ran on the platform that he would produce the birth certificate, the hard copy, to shut us, quote, birthers up. He served four years and then was voted out just a few weeks into his office as governor, he had to admit that he had not laid his hands on the birth certificate, could not lay his hands on the birth certificate, would not present a hard copy birth certificate. However, he had been assured that it existed. Wow. The governor of Hawaii couldn't produce what he promised. And by the way, he's a Democrat and a good friend of the Obama family, and he hates birthers. I wonder if he's a birther now. He couldn't put his hands on it. Let me also remind you that the only document that's ever been proffered in this case, put on the White House website, is a PDF electronic copy. It has been proven to be a forgery. Two different criminal investigations and conferences have been held. Sheriff Joe Arpaio, Mike Zullo, etc., and you've heard all of that. Not only that, but Reed Hayes, digital document expert, eligible to testify in federal courts all over this land, also a, an employee of Perkins Coy Law Firm as a digital document expert, one who has tried to defend Obama's citizenship. He took Mike Zullo up on a challenge 
and got all of the information that Mike Zullo and Sheriff Arpaio had and examined it, and Reed Hayes has issued an affidavit to Mike Zullo and Sheriff Arpaio, I think it's 40 pages long, saying that the birth certificate presented on the White House, White House website is a 100% fabrication forgery. This is a digital document expert eligible to testify in federal courts all over the land and a former employee of the very law firm that used to defend Obama's citizenship. Let me also remind you that the woman who supposedly supplied the paper copy for the copy that's now on the White House website, one Loretta Fuddy, <laughs> former director of Hawaii Department of Health, she's the one that supposedly supplied the paper. She died in a plane crash, which corresponded with Mike Zullo making radio announcements that he knew who was involved and would soon be exposing it. Within a few weeks of that announcement, she's dead in a plane crash. Let me also remind you something else we know. Two different public news conferences, Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, Mike Zullo, present all the evidence and report there's still an ongoing investigation, reportedly with more information and another news conference to come. Let me also remind you that Barack Obama spent well over a million dollars locking down all of his records. There's very little we know about him. Let me remind you that the Congressional Research Co uh, Service, a, an official arm of Congress, admitted that Obama was never vetted. I've got all the references to this where you can read it yourself. They put it in writing. He was never vetted. vetted. Of course, their excuse was that there was no mechanism for the President of the United States to be vetted. I disagree. The Constitution says the Electoral College is supposed to do it before they certify him. The Constitution says that. I can also remind you that Senate Resolution 511-2008 declared John McCain to be, in fact, I'll read it to you, the resolution. John McCain, he was investigated by the Senate. John McCain was, not Barack Obama. John McCain. But it says, whereas John Sidney McCain III was born. Now listen, here's the definition of natural born according to the U.S. Senate in 2008. And they have the legal authority to state this and to issue this resolution. Based upon the Constitution of the United States, to be eligible for the office of president, you must be natural born. That's what it starts off by saying, and then it ends by saying, whereby, whereas John Sidney McCain III was born to American citizens, that is, mother and father who are American citizens, on an American military base in the Panama Canal Zone, in other words, U.S. territory, now therefore be it declared that John Sidney McCain III is a natural born citizen under Article 2, Section 1 of the Constitution of the United States. There it is. Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton signed it in 2008 for everybody out there saying, well, nobody's ever ruled on this, and there's all kinds of opinions, and the, and the, and the, and the Supreme Court hasn't ruled on this. Malarkey. There's not all kinds of opinions. The U.S. Senate just ruled on it, and the, con and, the, and the federal courts have not gone against it. They just ruled in 2008, and Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton signed it. John McCain was considered and deemed a natural-born citizen because both of his parents were citizens at the time of his birth, and he was born on American soil. So let me remind you that even if his birth certificate is legitimate, He's still not natural born because on it, it says his father was a citizen of Kenya. And let me remind you that at this point, even if he has an American birth certificate, he has broken federal law and committed fraud by, printing, by putting a fabricated birth certificate on the government website. That's a criminal offense. We're going to take a time out, then we're going to go straight to the phones. We've got callers holding. Joey, let's take this time out very quickly. You're listening to Freedom Friday with Carl Gals. We'll be right back with your calls and more. Don't go anywhere.
Now, back to your turn on 1330 WEBY, Northwest Florida's talk radio. The phone lines are open, so call in and join the conversation at 623-1330. Leftist liberals hate him. Atheists despise him. Evolutionists and socialists fear him. Certain other talk show hosts are jealous of him. The White House administration knows who he is, but this is why you listen to Carl Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops, the Oval Office of Gulf Coast Talk Radio. All right, we are back, America. Thank you so much. And listen, we're going to go straight to the phone lines. Let me just tell you, at the bottom of the hour, right after the break, we're going to give away this copy of Final Warning. And you'll have to be listening because that's when I will give you the phone number and tell you what it takes for you to win this copy of Final Warning, one of the rarest books in the world right now. (laughs) Final Warning and Runaway astounding bestseller at Amazon. All right, let's go to the phone lines. Jeff, you're up. Thanks for listening to Freedom Friday today. You've got a f- about a minute to sound off. What's on your mind? I'll do my best, sir. Sir, my name is Jeff Harrison from Dubois, Pennsylvania. I'm a volunteer with Mike Bolin of Where's Obama's Birth Certificate.com. And uh, from time to time, Mike is in contact uh, with Lieutenant Zulo. And as far as I know, we're still uh, they're investigating the case uh, on Obama's credentials. Um. Two things I'd like to just mention is, one, uh, I'd like to ask the audience to continue to contact Congress for Lieutenant, or uh, for Sheriff O'Pyle, because Sheriff O'Pyle a couple times said that this needs to go to Congress, so I'd like to ask people to continue to contact their congressman on this issue. And about, oh, a month and a half or so ago, um, Mike Bolin um, sent out some 3,300 DVDs to all county sheriffs, New, new elected congressmen, DAs, and governors. And I'd like to share that, uh, a co- uh, like two times, I went with Mike Bolin and a bunch of volunteers, and we did go and knock on congressmen doors. We had we cold called, we had appointments, and sometimes we talked to their reps. Okay, and you, I can you've, got a, you've got about 15 seconds, Jeff. Go ahead. Okay, all congressmen should have the sheriff DVD plus Lieutenant Zulu's affidavit. That's what I okay. got to say. Okay, good deal, Jeff, and thank you, and thank you for your work. And, folks, we've got a phone line open now. If you want to be a part of the show, 850-623-1330. You can call in and sound off, and we'll give you a minute or two as well. Let's go right back to the phone lines. Uh, Mark, you're up. Thanks for listening to Freedom Friday today. Uh, go ahead and sound off. Okay, Carl, first of all, um, uh, congratulations on your book. Oh, thank uh, you. you you've been, well, you're well-deserved. The, uh, Thanks. It's my understanding that uh, one of the amendments to the Constitution allows for e- a natural-born citizen to be either parent, and it doesn't have to be on our soil, as long as either parent. Now, a resolution cannot surpass a amendment, a past amendment to the Constitution. So how does that work yeah. out? No, it's not. Uh, the the uh, uh, amendment to the Constitution doesn't address natural-born. I think it addresses naturalized. And there's a difference. You see, there's native-born. That is, somebody born on U.S. soil, like Bobby Jindal. He's native-born. Marco Rubio, they're native-born. But at the time of their birth, both of their parents, both, both of them, both sets of their parents were foreigners. So they're not natural born. That's what, what the defini- that's what the definition of Senate Resolution 511. Cruz is born off of, he, he is what's called a, a legal citizen, a natural citizen, not natural born, but he is a, a citizen according to, and uh, hold on just a minute, and I can give you the federal code. And, and I have no problem. He is a citizen according to code number 8, U.S. Code 1401, uh, defines citizenship. And you can be born off soil as long as your mother is an active U.S. citizen at the time of your birth and had been in the country for a uh, prior to your uh, birth uh, for a period of so many months. So uh, Ted Cruz is a legal U.S. citizen, but he's not natural born. There's there's the deal, Mark. There's the difference. Okay. So, well, so yeah, but the U.S. Constitution doesn't define natural born, but a lot of the papers of our founding fathers do. They, they based it upon Vattel's law. There were some U.S. Supreme Court uh, statements and resolutions and, and declarations, uh, uh, you know, years ago. Uh, and, and so they're right. The U.S. Supreme Court has never said, we're going to give a working definition. But the U.S. Senate in 2008, in Senate Resolution 511, did give a wor- working de- uh, definition mark. They defined it 
and said that this was the definition. They didn't use the word definition, but this satisfies the requirements of natural born, and it was on John McCain, and Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton signed it and agreed. And and it was, he had to be born on U.S. soil, to, and both parents had to be citizens at the time of his birth. That's okay. the definition. That's the latest definition. It's never been challenged in court. So um, still a resolution it does not, uh, can't, isn't a law. Well, no, the deal is there's no law about it. It's a constitutional uh, – if, Mark, I, I, I think I, I, I didn't mean to hang up on you. I've got so many buttons going here. I sure hope you've got a radio on and you can hear this. But And, and I didn't – he's going to think I hung up because I didn't like what he said, and that's not true. Mark, I sure hope you can hear what's happening here. But, no, that's – the resolution is a declaration of Senate – of the Senate, and they were the ones authorized to run this kind of investigation on eligibility. The Constitution is law, but what it says is that you have to be natural born. Okay? So the courts have not defined that, so Congress that makes laws and Senate, they had a hearing and said, Here's the definition we're going by. So the latest definition used to judge a presidential candidate was in 2008, Senate Resolution 511 on John McCain. So that's the deal. Okay, we've got uh, Aaron from New York. Uh, let me see. Aaron, are you there? Yes, sir. How okay, are you? Okay, good. Thanks for listening okay. up in New York. Uh, you've got a minute to sound off. Yeah, two, qu two quick points. And my question really is, uh, two people in the media who seem to be good guys, and I'll give you the two examples. Uh, Mark Levin, who you know, I listen to, I'm sure you know who he is, I do. seems to always be on the right side of issues when it comes to the Constitution. And I want to mention that not only is he just a, he's not just a radio guy, he's a constitutional attorney. I know. He insists that Cruz is eligible. And that's, that's number one. And then number two, it's indirectly about this. Bill O'Reilly, who I don't always agree with, does a lot of good work, seems to be a moral guy, has a segment on his show where people will email him and he'll answer questions. And the e one email was, um, why is, uh, I'm not going to mention the name, everybody knows who I'm talking about, this person using a uh, social security number out of Connecticut. And his answer was, well, his father had lived there. First of all, his father never lived in Connecticut. Right. Right. And number two, everybody knows that your Social Security number comes from the state in which you were born. I was born in New York. If I moved to Florida, if I moved to Las Vegas, I don't change my Social Security number. So here's my, my question, uh, Carl. Why do you think these people, who at least seemingly seem to be on the right side, on the good side, are just... Just yeah. arrogant and yeah. stupid well, about this whole issue. Well, let me answer your question, Aaron. I've got to put you on hold because we're out of time. We've got a hard break coming up. That's a good question. Mark Levin has been wrong about a lot of things. I know he's a smart guy, but he's he's cocky and arrogant and oftentimes wrong. He is dead wrong on this. I've already explained how uh, and, and running out of time, so I don't want to repeat myself, but he's just wrong, and he's been on the wrong side of this from the beginning. Bill O'Reilly is, in my opinion, a government shill from beginning to end, from top to bottom. He's a government shill, and especially on this issue. Everything he utters concerning this issue is pure blabber and blither and, and, and stupidity. It, it, his facts are totally mangled every time he opens his mouth. So that's what I know about those two guys. Folks, we'll be back after this timeout. Man, time flies. Thank you, listeners. Thank you, callers. We'll be back in just a second.